You're listening to Occult Symbolism and Pop Culture. I'm your host, Isaac Wise Up. Today, we're going to talk about Balenciaga, part two. You've already heard part one. We don't need to go back into that. We're going to continue this deep dive into Balenciaga, the fashion designer company here. Uh, we did part one, recapping, revisiting the bonus show I did from November 21st, but now we're going full steam ahead. I'm going to walk you through all the key players. I'm going to give you updates on the situation. We're talking about, here's the key players we're going to go through and their roles, relations, statements about what's going on. Kim Kardashian. Yay. Kanye West, right? The kid that was the model in the shoot, the photographer, the set designer, Nicole Kidman. Then we're going to get into the new campaign which has a horrific, horrific reference hidden in the back of it, all right? If you don't know what I'm talking about, strap in. You're about to get your mind blown. We're talking about this new campaign with the new hidden symbols, books in the background, the artists involved. We're talking Matthew Barney, Michael Bormans. I've reviewed their art. I've watched my, Matthew Barney's video <laughs> that, wow, wow, wow. I've looked through Michael Borman's artwork of kids, toddlers, eating people, walking around with severed heads. Oh, get ready for this one. And then we're going to get into, we're getting into the dark, dark underbelly. We're talking about Epstein. We're talking about this model stylist, Lada Vagina. And we're going to talk, a lot of Volkova is her name. Then we're going to talk about Rachel Chandler, how this all ties to Epstein. And then we're going to wrap it up. What does it all mean? Hint, it's the Luciferian religion they want to believe in. They want us to believe in. It's revelation of the method. Hide your wife, hide your kids. We're going Death Con 3 on the Balenciaga. Death Con 3. Oh, yay. I And you know what? Here's the thing. I'm recording this December 1st in the afternoon. I watched bits and pieces of the Kanye West, Alex Jones interview. Insert the Ben Affleck smoking meme right here. The frustrated Ben Affleck smoking meme because now I know what I got to do this weekend. I got to watch three, four hours of this nonsense. It's pure gold. It's something amazing. <laughs> We're talking about the PSYOP to end all PSYOPs. It ties into with the Balenciaga. It ties into QAnon. I don't know what we're living through here. We're living through an actual conspiracy. We're all decoding at the same time. Kanye said he loves Hitler and he loves and uh, the Nazis weren't all bad. And I get what he's saying. But anyway. We're going to save that for the next show. Let's, and I know, by the way, from the small excerpt I saw, Alex Jones asked Kanye about the Balenciaga stuff, and he dismisses it. He dismisses it completely. He's like, this is just a distraction. Oh, that's interesting, because I know Kanye's got a lot of money involved with Balenciaga, even though they dropped his ass. Maybe he's got some money still tied up there. I don't know. But this isn't going to be another show about Kanye. I need to make an index of all the Kanye stuff I've done over the years. I've covered this guy for about 10 years now, and he's all over the place. Sometimes we think he's the conspiracy truth or savior. Sometimes he's pushing Luciferian symbolism. And if you asked me my opinion, he tips the scales on Luciferian. Uh Uh-huh. That's right. Don't be fooled. Some of the people you think are your heroes... Are the PSYOP enemies, that's all I'm saying. And I could be wrong. What do I know? You know what I mean? These guys, Alex Jones and uh, Kanye West and Elon Musk, these guys are in some whole other elite level that I'll never be in the same room with. So they might know some things. Even Trump, I'll throw Trump in there too. They might know some things, some plans, some ideas that I am not privy to. And that's always been my beef with these these alt-right losers who are quasi-dog-whistling white supremacists. If you're going to be the savior to the truth or world, then come out and say it. 
You know what I mean? Like with Trump and Kanye, like you guys want to hint around, oh, we're going to save the kids. Oh, we're going to expose the mainstream media and who really runs things. Okay. Then start naming names. You guys are in the rooms with these people. You're getting paid by these people. You got the receipts. I don't. I'm just a jackass in my room watching the news and trying to make sense of all this. But people want to give these guys a pass and say, no, they're the heroes. They're the saviors. No, they're not. They're they're false idols. You know, Kanye West went on and on about how he was Jesus for a long time. He thought he was Jesus. He said he belongs in the Bible. I know there's probably some young people out there that aren't don't know Kanye West past. He said he belongs in the Bible. He thinks he's God. He's a narcissist. That's why when he went in to tell Trump, Trump, you should be my running mate. Trump, who's also a narcissist, lost his mind. These are maniacs. Anyway, Balenciaga. <laughs> I'm going to put a link to episode one, part one, if you haven't heard it. You're going to need to hear that. Today we're going into part two, which we're going to reference the information from part one. All right, let's go. The episode that ensued from the first drama, the first episode, Balenciaga is suing the production designers because Balenciaga sees a massive fallout because this thing went viral. The mainstream media news is talking about it. Everyone's got an opinion now. Balenciaga doesn't want nothing to do with this. They're now suing the set designers. They're like, you're paying all the fallout damage. I, I believe it started at $25 million. It's going to go up because, you know, cancel culture. And sometimes... <laughs> we're t- we'll talk about this in the conclusion because we're the first the truth is we're the first ones to say cancel culture is a bad thing you should be able to say whatever you want even if it's offensive you know if Alex Jones wants to say the S-H-A-O-O-K kids were actors he should be allowed to say that first amendment well you need to apply that same argument to Balenciaga if they want to push satanic stuff and little kids eating other little kids That's their right. That's their First Amendment right. And I'm anti-cancel culture, so in a way, that is their right. I don't know. I don't know where the, you know, obviously I don't support it. Obviously, this is disgusting. I think the whole fashion industry is disgusting. They've been doing this stuff for a long time. And that's where I stand with it. I just want to expose it, talk about it. Just so you know, just so you can vote with your dollar on this aspect. I would never campaign to let's shut down Balenciaga. If people want to wear that nonsense and support that gross stuff, hey, that's on them. And, and you know, this is a big cancel culture discussion because that's what we're looking at. People want to say, pick and choose who they can cancel. And, you know, maybe this is an example where we should actually embrace cancel culture. Maybe? I don't know. It's an interesting conversation. And again... Who am I? I'm no philosopher. I'm just some just some guy. Here's my opinion. So they're suing the production designers because Balenciaga, they don't want none of the smoke. So they're suing the company is North Six, and the guy who put it together was Nicholas de Jardines. Probably mispronouncing it. There's also a guy, Demna Vasalia. I'm probably mispronouncing that. His name pops up on a lot of headlines when you look around at this stuff. He's the creative director of Balenciaga. He apologized on Instagram as well. He said, We sincerely apologize for any offense our holiday campaign may have caused. Our plush bear bags should not have been featured with children in this campaign. We have immediately removed the campaign from all platforms. Now, to make things worse... This was a holiday campaign. He said, I didn't realize that. He said it. What holiday are we talking about? We're talking about Christmas. And not and you know me, everybody. I'm very uh not a right wing guy. And I often think that whole idea that there's a war on Christmas is, you know, a little exaggerated, I think. But here's a case where they're not saying Christmas because it's not that holiday for them. It's most likely Saturnalia, the pagan holiday, the Roman holiday. All right. But I think it's interesting because this is all the big perversion of the holiday of Christmas. And we've talked about this in, where did we talk about it? In my first book, A Grand Unified Conspiracy Theory, we went through various 
holiday origin stories, and the origin story of Christmas was that the pagans of Roman of Rome used to practice the Saturnalia holiday around the uh, winter solstice, and is it the equinox or the solstice? Solstice, I think. And don't, don't quote me on that. And when Constantine said, "No, we're going to do the Christian thing now," they, you know conflated the dates so that they could keep partying. Because a lot of people say, well, Christ was actually not born in December. He was born in June or something because the sheep were in the pastures or whatever, right? And then also, let's throw in how this new Santa Claus movie, The Santa Clauses, has a scene where the kids come out and they spell, We Love Satan. And it's an act. It's a joke because it's an accidental thing in the movie. And the, if you watch the whole scene in context, because even uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor was like, "Hey, you guys misspelled it," and they're like, "Oh, okay." And then they spell it Santa. We love you, Santa. But it does raise the question: Is this grooming? Interesting. But we're going to talk more about this Demna Vasalia who apologized already. He's plugged into Kanye West and Lada Volkova. Now, if you've followed me for a period of time, as you surely do on my social medias, if you don't follow me, go to allmylinks.com backslash Isaac W and check out all the great links to social media and free books and, oh, my goodness, all the things. You'll know that we've covered many fashion shows through the golden age of IlluminatiWatcher.com blogging, right? I've covered it on the podcast several times. I had a lot of articles on the website, which, of course, got shadow banned. Then I got sued because I speak the truth. You know, these Kanye wants to be like, oh, I'm not controlled. <laughs> you got a lot of monetary interest, buddy. Come at me when your income goes to zero dollars a month, and then we'll see who's crying. And then we'll see who's controlled. All right? Sorry, I got a big chip. I got I'm 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 high T Isaac today and I got a big old chip on my shoulder cuz I was watching uh, you know this Alex Jones thing is in the back of my mind. Alex Jones is interviewing Ye. And Ye's being really bossy and I'm just like, dude, and Alex is being a saint with the guy. All right? And a lot of people lit me up because I was saying how Ye was being a big baby on Tim Pool and he needs to sack up. If he's going to talk about crazy theories, he's got to talk about them. Tim Pool wasn't even being that rude to him. Like, sure, he wasn't embracing him and being the nicest guy on earth. But, like, grow up, dude. I don't know. Is this the worst adversity you've ever faced? But Alex Jones was being great with him, and he was being bossy with Alex. I wanted to be like, bro, I don't know. I couldn't. I don't think I could interview Kanye. Even if he offered it to me, which he never would, we would have a real problem. So today, if you're keeping score, today I'm anti-Kanye West. (laughs) It changes every week. Some days I'm like, this guy might be the guy. Then another time, every time I hear him talk, I'm like, no, he's not. He's a bozo. But if you follow me, I've covered a lot of Met Galas, including the one where Elon Musk wore a jacket that said Nova Seclorum Ordo, which means New World Order. Again, let's question who these heroes are. You see the PSYOP going on over and over. First it was Donald Trump, and then it's Elon Musk, then it's Kanye West. It's all these guys who are going to save the day. And when you know it, they just can't quite get it done. First Trump's the most powerful man in the world. Couldn't do it. He had four years. He couldn't save the kids or arrest anybody or anything. Then Kanye West, who's the world's richest musician, world's richest artist. The jury is out. Maybe he'll make it happen, but he's not. He's more interested in becoming the president himself. And then we got Elon Musk, who was one of the world's most dangerous nerds that I've talked about. For many years, I've talked about the guy. And now, because he bought Twitter, all of a sudden, he's our hero. Get, Get out of here with this, man. I don't know why people are falling for all any of this nonsense. 
I'll keep talking about it though. I'll keep I'll keep trying to help the cause here. I also talked about Neon Demon. It's a film from a few years back about the fashion industry. It's a, a horror movie, right? And I don't I didn't do a, a whole episode on this like I normally do with my film analysis. It was a chunk of a bonus episode, so you got to be on the Patreon to hear that one or the VIP section. And in the, to sum it up, in the Neon De- Demon, it's about a girl trying to get in the fashion industry, and we get a lot of symbolism of the all-seeing eye. And guess what else we get? We get cannibalism. And let's not overlook this new push for fashion gate is the term they're using now. We're reinvestigating Marina Abramovich, who was a big time part of the fashion. She's a huge name in the fashion industry. But guess who she's plugged in with? She's plugged in with Jay-Z and uh, you get into the pizza emails and all kinds of stuff. And Ye's a part of this, too. He was. And that's my that's why I say the jury's out, because it's like, did he see some things and is he going to provide the receipts? I don't think he is. I think he's a con artist like Trump. But we'll see, right? I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. Don't at me. <laughs> don't at me. I don't I don't don't tell me how wrong I am. I'm just trying to give you my opinion. I'm openly admitting here loud and clear I could be very wrong about this. I'm just telling you as I see it. And until the day comes, and look, I gave you I gave some of you guys a, a point on the Kanye scale when he released the text of him and that Harley Pasternak guy. I said, okay. There you go. That's one. Let's keep it going now. Because that's not enough. They're going to shut it down from that. It's too speculative. There's no proof here. Well, I mean, there's proof, but you know what I'm saying. Also, recall... We're going to get into Kim Kardashian next. But also recall how I talked about last month, Doja Cat. She'd been doing a lot of weird stuff, right? She was poking fun of the Illuminati. She had her birthday party it was the 27th birthday party with freemasonry symbolism and illuminati themes and stuff remember that because she was talking she's joking about the 27 club when the illuminati sacrifices they do the blood sacrifice which kanye said is real well in october she was also at a fashion show and guess what happened she was at a fashion show and she had a black eye This is what she said. She said, this is my first fashion week, so I'm having a great time, but it's definitely kicking my ass. She said in an interview with Vogue, I wanted to do something where I have a black eye, split nose, and split lip, but my lashes are really pretty. We made it glam at the same time. And it's this weird mix of abuse, physically, sexually, with the models mixed in with the art. Guess who put that show on? Balenciaga. And you recall there's this theory about all these politicians and celebrities with the black eye. They're called the Black Eye Club. And, you know, there's different ideas on what it is. It, nothing concrete enough for me to fully believe, but it is really weird that these old dudes who got these black eyes all the time. What the hell's that about? Some people say it's the panda bear eyes. But the point is, you see it on the teddy bears in the Balenciaga ad. Those little plush bears that they got in trouble for and have since taken the images down. You can still see it on my Instagram. Those teddy bears have a black eye. It's a way of normalizing abuse of kids, allegedly. Now, let's talk about Kim Kardashian. She came out with what I would argue is a very neutral petition. You go to some of the news websites, they're like, oh, Kim is really concerned about this. But when I read it, I thought, that's weak, man. She's waiting for this to blow over. She's waiting for the next big thing to make this not to go under the rug, right? She says she's reevaluating her relationship. Let's see. In comments posted to her social media, Kardashian said she had waited to speak out, not because, quote, not because I haven't been disgusted and outraged by the recent Balenciaga campaigns, 
but because I wanted an opportunity to speak to their team to understand for myself how this could have happened. She went on to say that as a mother, she was left, quote, shaken by the disturbing images. The safety of children must be held with the highest regard, and any attempt to normalize child abuse of any kind should have no place in our society, period. I appreciate Balenciaga's removal of the campaigns and apology. In speaking with them, I believe they understand the seriousness of the issue and will take the necessary measures for this to never happen again. And then it happened <laughs> immediately. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. So to me, that's a, that is not a very serious response. That's her saying, look, I'm getting paid pretty good here. I'm not trying to get rid of this cash cow. And at the same time, off topic a little bit, it was leaked that Kim Kardashian was actually the person credited for the Trump presidential pardon of prisoner Alice Johnson, as per Alice Johnson, who said that Kim was the only one talking to her. Because previously it was believed that Kanye West was the guy who made this happen. And the truth comes out, it was not Kanye West, it was Kim Kardashian. Because Kim apparently is a longtime friend with Ivanka Trump. And she was able to finagle her to start getting Jared Kushner to talk to Alice Johnson. So anyway, does she have... You ever, you ever heard of the theories about how the Kardashians come from a line of witches? <laughs> I mean, I explored this and I ultimately rejected it because there wasn't enough meat on the bone there. But it could be. Maybe they've got some kind of magical power. I mean, they're men, uh, over men, right? Meaning, maybe she influenced Trump to let this woman go, right? Kanye's going, all the men go a little nutty. Kanye's doing some weird things. Kanye said that Trump was actually trashing Kim Kardashian at the dinner where Ye asked Trump to be his running mate in 2024. Kanye said, quote, but then he goes on to say that Kim is a expletive and you can tell her I said that and I was thinking like, that's the mother of my children. This is all happening the same week, okay? What is happening? It's like a conspiracy soap opera genre in live action. Now, fun fact, during that same meeting, Ye asked Trump why he didn't do anything for the Jan 6 rioters while he was still the president. You right? Remember that? The Jan 6 rioters wanted to... I'm not going to speculate. Too many people get upset. But they did what they did, and Trump was still president for another 13 days after that. Never pardoned him, never did anything for him. And Kanye pushed back and said, why didn't you do anything for them? Which I thought was a interesting question that he should have answered. Speak, and since we're talking Kanye, let's move on to him. He's been hanging out with this uh, Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos, both supposed alt-right wing type people. I say supposed because I don't really know their whole steez. I don't trust the news enough to just go with what they say. They say they're, that Nick Fuentes is a white supremacist. I got to dig into it. I don't know. Maybe. Probably, right? Maybe. He sure, he sure wears the uniform, but, but who knows? Sometimes the news is a little sensational, so I'm not going to say that. But they went on Tim Pool, the podcast Tim Pool, who's a guy who... On his Twitter, he says he's a disenfranchised liberal, and now he's this right-wing guy or something like that. I don't know much about him either. And I listened to almost the whole thing. It's only the first 30 minutes because Kanye walks out. But Ye said some interesting things on that interview. He says how he would have got Michael jackson meaning Ye has been saying that he was on prescription for lithium. And I guess he stopped taking them because he's worried about what it's going to do to his mind. And I think the implication here is that he might have even said it, that Britney Spears was taking so many meds that her mind is now a little off. And he's saying, like, that's how they took Michael Jackson out. 
is what he's saying. By giving them too many of these drugs, right? So then, and then he goes on, he talks about Jared Kushner and Robbie Manuel. And how they were both, he's implying that they were handlers for Obama and Trump and all this stuff, right? Um, but we're not trying to get too political here. But then around 24 minute mark, Ye walks off. And it's because Tim Pool pushes back and is kind of like, hey, when you say they, because Kanye's been saying they a lot, referencing the you know who's, he like walks off. And Tim Pool even pushes back on all this stuff and says, dude, you can't just say they're. All these one types of people are the are your problem, and that's what I've been saying. You know what I mean? You can't just. I get how you could say, well, there's like this person or that person who are messing with me, and they just so happen to be you know what, right? I get that. Anyhow, he previously got into it with Trump, because again, they're both narcissistic maniacs, and they both think they should have all the power in the world. And I don't care about none of that stuff right now, right? What I'm worried about is this Balenciaga thing because Kanye worked for Balenciaga for many years. He's very closely tied to this. In fact, Balenciaga fired him. He didn't leave Balenciaga. They fired him. And the paparazzi's asked him about the Balenciaga scandal. And this is what he said per TMZ. This just shows you all celebrities are controlled. You don't see no celebrities talking about the Balenciaga situation. All of these celebrities out there, don't let them influence you in any way because they're controlled by the people who really influence the world. They're not serving God. Which is all very interesting, right? The And, and, and then he went on Alex Jones today. It's, there's a lot going on. I was I had my whole show prepared. I had gotten the things I needed to, to get, right? And... Then he shows up on the Alex Jones InfoWars show. And he said some very interesting things on there. Uh, again, he, and he was on there with uh, Nick Fuentes. Who, he's like a 24-year-old kid. I don't know why he's got, you know, nothing against 24-year-olds, but I don't know why. He kept punting all the questions, the hard questions, over to Nick. He's like, Nick, can you answer that? Yeah, he did, which I thought was really weird. But Alex Jones asks him about the Balenciaga. And again, I haven't seen the whole thing yet. I see, I saw bits and pieces here and there because I've been busy, right? He asked Ye about this Balenciaga thing. And Ye dismissed it. He said, this is just noise. It's nothing. Really? It's nothing? It seems very obviously something. In fact, you know me. I don't get too excited about some of these conspiracies. But uh, this one in particular, this one bears some real fruit. This one bears some real fruit. He then deflects it and says, well, you know, I'm afraid to use certain terms. He says, well, all P-O-R-N is 10 years from Kitty P. And I don't know what he meant by that, but I'm here to tell you. I've watched adult entertainment for more than 10 years. (laughs) No, I'm not proud of it, right? I'm just telling you the truth here, folks. And I can tell you that I'm nowhere near trying to watch the other stuff. If Kanye thinks that, because he used to, he talks about how he was addicted to to P P O R N. If he felt like he was getting drawn towards Kitty stuff, like that's his thing. There's something wrong with you, buddy. Because like that's not me. And again, we're talking about. One person's subjective reality versus the consensus subjective reality. Because he says, oh, we got to, you know, if you want to worry about Balenciaga and kid stuff, you need to start with strip clubs and adult films. That's the real problem. Oh, really, Kanye? Really? That's the problem? Not these art campaigns that have abuse of kids? Are you mad? Books about little kids eating people? Oh, but take down the strip clubs. Okay. Okay, yay. Let's get you back to bed there, buddy. You can tell I got really upset by that. Because I'm a big... Uh, look, I know some people... Can, it's like anything else, man. 
Some people can handle adult entertainment. Some people get addicted to it. Same goes for cigarettes. Are you going to go out and petition cigarettes? Cigarettes and alcohol. Alcohol ruins a ton of lives all over the place all the time. I don't have that problem. I can have a drink and then not drink for three months. Does that mean we should all... Like, are we going to filter out all the things in life so that it's safe for everyone? Is that what Ye wants? He wants everyone to live in this Christian nationalist world where it's all according to the Bible. And look, I'm a Christian, but it's free will. It's not a fascist dictatorship that we're going to just say, oh, yeah, you know, this is all bad stuff. And, you know, that's why they love Russia so much, because Putin's like that. He's more like that alt-right fascist you know, Christian or die kind of attitude, which is not the right way to go. You can't, I don't know if people, you know, people like Ye don't know human nature. The the time you tell people you can't do this, that's when they're interested in it. You got to say, there's some things will man, you you can responsibly engage in some of these activities, but there's going to be rules. You want to go to a bar and drink liquor that's very harmful and toxic to you and could kill you and ruin people's lives. You can do that. You got to be responsible about it. You're not going to get behind the wheel and drive. That's the proper approach. Because if you just outright ban it, like they did with prohibition, you saw how well that worked. I don't know. He lost me with that one completely. And Alex Jones gave him like a second and third attempt to talk about these things. Balenciaga, he keeps dodging it. He, and he's like, oh, no, it's, Balenciaga is not the problem. You know, him and Kim love Balenciaga, apparently. He said, no, the problem is cheating, threesomes, fornification. Okay, dude. All right. Anything, he said, he said literally anything, anything related to sex is equally as bad as kitty stuff. So if you enjoy adult entertainment, Kanye saying you are a kid abuser. That's what he's saying. So I take offense to that on behalf of all of you listening and myself. He's he's lost his mind with that one. Then he defends Nazis and he said he loves Hitler. He said he said Hitler had some good in him. Okay, I mean I I get that right. Like maybe Hitler was a great artist. I get that. I actually get that perspective. We're all God's children. You know what I mean? That's why I'm anti death penalty because it's like man, you got to give people a a place, a path to salvation, and even Hitler deserves that, right? weird flex to come out and say you love him that hard when you're sitting next to the guy who's this uh nick fuentes who there's claiming as a white supremacist and he's like, any he, any wonder he's like you know hitler was a christian no he wasn't dude i don't know if you've read a history book ever yay he said he doesn't read books so i guess not um here's the thing hitler was not a christian it's very much into pagan occultism and <laughs> that's a pretty well documented thing and I think I think I, I wonder if all of this isn't just publicity, the world's worst publicity to run for president because he knows everyone's going to talk about it. I have no idea. And then Alex Jones brings up Ali Alexander and Owen Schroyer. And Ali Alexander is a very uh, I, he was in some documentary I watched called uh, what's it called White Noise about white supremacy, hanging out with a bunch of people who think white people are better than everyone else on Earth, which is weird because he he's a very dark complected guy. I don't know if he's uh, is he a black guy or. I don't know. I don't know his uh, nationality. I don't lose enough sleep on this stuff. Anyway, this we don't want the show to get off into the Alex Jones. It's it's dancing around in the back of my head and it keeps coming up. I'm going to keep it moving. Let's move on to the kid who was actually at the set at the photo shoot. Daily Mail interviewed the father of one of these kids that's holding the pedo bear thing. I know I just avoided saying the P-E-D-O word for 10 minutes and then I just said it. Whatever. I'm trying my best here, folks. I just don't want to get canceled again. You know, someone's got to come out here and give you some fair and balanced coverage of these truth or conspiracy talks. This is what they said. It says, the father of a British child model who posed clutching X-rated teddy bears wearing bondage gear for Balenciaga's BDSM-themed fashion shoot today defended the warped campaign, saying his daughter had a fantastic time posing for the photographs. Speaking exclusively to Mail Online, the father, who remains anonymous, 
said he was present at the shoot, which was an enjoyable day out, and he insisted the bizarre pictures had been taken totally out of context. Quote, no parent would actively encourage the child to take part in something which was pornographic, and I think the publicity surrounding what happened has been blown out of all proportion. I disagree with him. This is grooming. This is normalizing stuff. Now, is there anything wrong with BDSM? If you're a consenting adult, absolutely not. Knock yourself out. But why have it on the kids' clothing line stuff? That crosses a line to me. That's very upsetting. The photographer, Gabriel Gallimberti, said this. Uh, bah, bah, bah. On his Instagram page, Gallimberti issued an apology, saying that he was not in creative control of the shoot and merely was in charge of lighting. He said, I am not in a position to comment on Balenciaga's choices, but I must stress that I was not entitled in whatsoever manner to neither choose the products nor the models nor the combination of the same. As a photographer, I was only and solely requested to lit the given scene and take the shots according to my signature style. As usual, the direction of the campaign and end of the shooting are not on the hands of the photographer. I suspect that any person prone to the pedophilia searches on the web and has unfortunately a too easy access to images completely different than mine absolutely explicit in their awful content. Accusations like these are addressed against wrong targets and distract from the real problem and criminals. So the photographer's like, hey, I was just shooting it, man. They set it up. So Blunt, you know, it's one of these deals. Blunt's the eyes pointing over here. <laughs> photographer's pointing over there. He's like, I got nothing to do with that. So who's responsible for the whole set design? Who put this court case in there? Who put these bears in BDSM gear? Nicholas Desjardins. He is the uh, set designer here. And Hype Beast posted an article with his attorney's response. Smart move. You better lawyer up, man. You better lawyer up. This is about to get deep, you know. And the company North Six and this guy Nicholas are uh, getting sued. This is what the lawyer said. However, Amelia, this is what the Hype Beast article said. However, Amelia K. Bronkov, an attorney for Nicholas Desjardins and, the, and his company, said that there was, certainly was no malevolent scheme going on. As Balenciaga is aware, numerous boxes of documents simply were sourced from a prop house as rental items. Moreover, representatives from Balenciaga were present at the shoot, overseeing it and handling papers and props, and Desjardins, as a said designer, was not responsible for image selection from the shoot. A North Six representative said that the production company did not have creative input or control over the shoot. North Six was not on set during the final set arrangements. So they're like, that wasn't us either. I mean, I'm calling BS on that because it seems to me that the co- it's a quite a quinky thing to have all these things lined up. And we're going to prove it with the next image that we're going to decode here. And what's interesting is that Nicholas Desjardins actually shot many pieces with Beyonce, including her latest album, Renaissance, which had the album cover we talked about on this very show when it came out. The You remember the disco horse? We talked about it potentially being the Pale Horse, a spiritual Armageddon, the Pale Horse of the Apocalypse, the revealing. We're going to hit this in the conclusion. We're going to get spiritual in the conclusion because that's what this is all about. And recall, on the last episode, we talked about the dates on the wall of that photo. One of the dates was February 3rd, 2013, which was the Super Bowl, which Beyonce flashed the Illuminati Triangle coincidence isn't it and if you recall she did a song called break my soul the sixth track on the album by the way and the, you know in the album there's lots of uh, saturnian symbolism we covered the alchemical messaging in it and 
it fits into the digital matrix stuff. There's actually a virtual reality experience in the metaverse she's working on with Spatial Labs, which is owned by Jay-Z, Jay-Z's metaverse company. All these things fit together, I believe. So listen to that show, too. I'll try to find the link for you if I can. I don't know. I gotta. I want to listen to this Alex Jones show pretty bad. So <laughs> uh, Let's talk about Nicole Kidman. She came out, guns a-blazing, right? The next ad drops from Balenciaga, and it's got so, a few models on there. One of them is Nicole Kidman, and it's her modeling the Spring 23 collection, and she's remained silent on Balenciaga, drawing criticisms. We should cancel her. All right? Now, let's not talk about Nicole Kidman and the fact that she was in Eyes Wide Shut. Let's talk about her father. Let's go to one of my now-deleted archive articles from IlluminatiWatcher.com. We're going back to 2014. We talked about her father, Anthony, who died in 2014. There were theories online claiming he was part of this Nazi, CIA, satanic, child-abusing ring called the Ninth Circle. Now, this is all theory. I don't know any of this for fact. This could be nonsense. But it comes from a complainant filed by Fiona Barnett. And Fiona asserts there are Australian rings of kid abuse, trafficking, mind control, hunting humans. These are all themes that keep popping up over the years. It's got to be some truth to some of this, right? I'm going to read to you here from the article. The main purpose, this is from uh, Fiona Barnett's article talking to blaming Anthony, Nicole Kimmons' father, who's dead. The main perpetrator of my child S.E.X. abuse, Anthony Kidman, is dead after I filed formal complaints accusing him of the R.A.P.E. torture and murder of children in an ex- exclusive Sydney, Australia, pedophile ring. As a child victim of mind control, I feel he's been sacrificed for failing to adequately program me. Remember, Kanye's been saying that all these celebrities are controlled. Uh, his uh, trainer but kind of may, might be tied in MK Ultra, and maybe he was programming him. Who knows? Kidman was responsible for ensuring that I never disclosed pedo. I'm just gonna say pedo ring activities that I witnessed as a child. He failed. News of Kidman's death impacted me. Sometimes, someone who has undergone intense treatment. I know that there are other victims of Kidman's crimes out there who are per- perhaps not as far along the healing path as I am. I anticipate the news of Kidman's death may have serious impact on the victims. Blah, blah, blah. My complaints last month to the Australian Child Abuse Royal Commission detailed two incidents in which Kidman subjected me to horrific physical and sexual assault. But there are even more serious crimes against children that I witnessed Kidman commit as a member of this elite Sydney pedophile ring. Those complaints have gone to the International Common Law Court of Justice in Brussels. Uh, Then they say that, let's see here, Barnett's Nazi grandfather's pedo network was said to include clinical psychologists Kidman, Anthony Kidman, and John W. Gittinger, who developed a popular test among psychiatric professionals known as the Personality Assessment System. Now, side note, that Personality Assessment System by Gittinger was, in fact, True true news here was, in fact, part of the CIA MKUltra mind control program. It's kind of like the Meyer-Briggs personality test. It tells you, you know, it's supposed to try and predict human behavior, and, and arguably they use this stuff for social media to predict what you'll buy and do and all this stuff. Now, fun fact, Gittinger was the guy who did the psychoanalyzing of Sidney Gottlieb, who was the director of MKUltra. So before the CIA put Gottlieb as the head of MK Ultra, Gittinger did the psychoanalysis of him to make sure he could do it. 
Golly was into some leftist stuff and counterculture ideas. He lived in a cabin in the woods and grew his own food and all this stuff. Uh, let me keep reading, though, from this article. In another article of the Independent Australian News, it was reported that Barnett's dramatic testimony put members in tears when she went before the Australian Royal Commission into Child Abuse. Barnett was named as her perpetrator's... No, Barnett had named as her perpetrator's her grandfather, Kidman, two former Australian prime ministers, a Parliament House Governor General, and a state police commissioner. As with child pedal rings in the Netherlands, Europe, Canada, and the U.S., the Australian pedo network was said to include police officers, which some could say that ties into Freemasonry, psychiatrists, biochemists, psychologists, actors, writers, politicians, university lecturer, university lecturers, and medical doctors. Oh, exhausting. So Nicole Kidman remaining real quiet about things. She's like Kim. And and yay at this point. Waiting for the storm to blow by. You know, you just wait long enough, wait a month, something big in the news cycle is going to distract everybody, and this is going to be old news. Remember when we were talking about Wayfair for a month? Which is, you know, I don't know if the Wayfair thing was real or not. It sure was weird. And I've used Wayfair. It's a decent service. I hope then I hope it's not true, right? Moving on. New campaign from Balenciaga. This is the hot the hot goss now. We've moved on to a new image from their Spring 23 Guard Robe collection. Probably mispronouncing that. It's probably French. Garde Robe or something like that. If you go to their website, you can see they did this runway type show at the New York Stock Exchange. And the models all had these black gimp masks on. You know, they can't stop. They can't stop with the BDSM. And they had solid black clothing. And Ye's been walking around just like this with the solid black head to toe, black ski mask with no eyes and mouth. In fact, he was wearing it on Alex Jones today. What are they doing? Is this nihilism, suppression of the ego, suppression of the human condition? What is this? What is going on here? If you look at the steps of the ritual, masking up is one of them. And we're going to cover that here real soon with one of these artists they featured in the campaign. Now, because my argument is, Ye's been wearing this weird face mask stuff for at least a year now. I think he was rolling out this stuff for Balenciaga. He was trying to put it out in the masses. They pay him to do it so that the fashion show seems cooler. I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know how it works. But on November 21st, they dropped photo shoot images for this campaign. And the one... It, the model looks like Courtney Cox. It's actually Isabel H- Hoopert. But the campaign has Nicole Kidman, Isabel Hoopert, and Bella Hadid. But in this one with Isabel Hoopert, and again, I'll put these images on the Instagram, there's some books in the background. And in, and like just like in the, the Bears, BDSM Bears shoot, we got to dig into this stuff. They're put there on purpose. You know, you got these court cases talking about kid stuff. But they're like, oh, no, it just came from a prop house, just coinky dinks. Okay. The one book is Matthew Barney's The Cremaster Cycle. And I'm looking it up. I'm like, what is The Cremaster Cycle? Well, if you go to Artnet, they describe what it's about. This former book comprises images from Barney's eponymous five-part film series, a complex masterwork of avant-garde cinema populated with macabre creatures and abstruse sexual metaphors. Oh, really? You don't say. I mean, at least they had an adult in this photo shoot. I look, I'm, I'm digging around. I'm like, what are we talking about here? What's a cream master? And if you look it up, a cream master is the muscle that covers the male testicle. 
I'm not making this up. The five films called the Cremaster Cycle are about different stages of the testes because the Cremaster muscle, it ascends or descends the testes based upon the temperature, right? You know what I'm saying? When you get cold, things shrink up. Well, the if you want the book, it was selling for like 300 bucks. I was like, I'm not buying that. There's a five-part film, this Cremaster Cycle, that the artwork and the book comes from. It's 398 minutes, so that's turns out that's 6.63 hours. I thought it was going to be 6.66. We got real close there, but it's 6.6 hours. Wikipedia claims it was sold as DVDs. There's like 20 sets in existence, and they sell they sold for at least $100,000 a set. And the people that bought them, some of them do screenings of this at the art galleries or something. And I'm reading about these these five films. Crim Master 3 is one that stood out. The official description, Crim Master 3 from 2002 is part zombie thriller, part gangster film. As the final installment completed in the series, which, by the way, the Crim Master 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are the five films. They didn't come out in that order. They came out like 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, or something like that. Don't ask. It's the artist mind, all right? This film is a dis- distillation of Barney's major themes, filtered through a symbolic matrix involving Freemasonry, Celtic lore, and coded references to the Cremaster cycle itself. I said, oh, really? And if you dig into it, you will find out that there's a 30 minute um there's a 30 minute teaser of Crim Master 3 you can find online if you're savvy enough like your boy is, all right? And we're going to talk about it because I, I got some photos for you. Again, you're going to go to my Instagram to see them from this 30-minute ordeal. And some of the themes we're going to talk about, Matthew Barney, the artist, is in it. He is playing the role of the entered apprentice, all right? And in this, you heard that there's a someone featured as the role of Hiram Abiff. This is the allegorical father of Freemasonry, if you weren't familiar, right? Uh, this is presented to people when they reach the third degree of Freemasonry. He is the supposed chief architect of Solomon's temple. Right? And supposedly he got murdered by these three hoodlums because they tried to get the secrets from him. And if you if you listen to my Harry Potter shows I did four years ago, we talked about how that is the same story in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter saga is the story of Hiram Abiff. Which is all very interesting because you know where Solomon's Temple was built. It was built in Jerusalem. You know. So there's that whole aspect of this. So, and then fun fact, Cream Master 2 was filmed in Utah at the Bonneville Salt Flats, partially. Just had to throw that in there. Uh, so let's let's talk about this thirty minute teaser called the order. It and of course it's just nonsense, right? It's one of these art house films, super avant garde, super abstract, super weird. Makes no sense. I'll walk you through it anyway. When it starts out, it's got these girls in sort of a bubble bath, but it's not a bathtub. It's hard to explain. And they have pasties on their nipples, and they are compass and square pasties if you look at it it's the way they're they're put on there and that is of course the freemasonic symbol for as above so below this ties into alchemy thoth the alien god that gave the language of alchemy to man huge topic we don't have time to get into it subscribe to my show and listen to some back episodes we talk about it several times and i'm going to put these images on instagram for you to see Then we see the title. It's shown as The Order. And this is what Wikipedia doesn't tell you. The subtitle is The Rainbow for Girls. 
what are we talking about with the rainbow? Just like we talked about in the hidden symbolism of the on the first Balenciaga episode, the rainbow represents going over the rainbow. It's a mind control symbol. As per many theorists. When you go over the rainbow, you get this altered personality thing going on. So this is also in here. So now you've got the two Balenciaga ads, both with the reference to the rainbow. Overtly. When you see the girls dancing, then this kind of new metal band comes out, like Limp Biscuit <laughs> comes out. Whatever, right? The girls are dancing, Limp Biscuit's playing. Then we get, and it changes. It says, uh, second, you know, had the first degree, and then it says second degree, agnostic front versus Murphy's Law. And agnostic front must be the band. That must be the band in the in the show. In the, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then we get third degree, Amy Mullins. This is one of the models. She's the female model in this film. Then they talk about the fourth degree, the five points of fellowship, which is a reference to the pentagram. Then we get the fifth degree, Richard Serra. And then we get the scene that says the hope of Hiram. And we see the artist... What's his name again? Matthew Marnie as the entered apprentice. And he's got blood all over his face and he's got a big thing smashed in, like a towel smashed in his mouth, like a bloody towel. He starts doing parkour and climbing this spiral shaped set. It looks like an airport or a mall or something. I don't know what it is. And we see dancers and the dancers are dressed as sheep. That's on purpose, I believe. This whole film was about Freemasonry. And in Freemasonry, the allegedly, the apron is made of lamb's wool, sheep wool. And it's supposedly meant to show the Freemasons and the high-level initiates, like, hey, the sheep are supposed to be led to slaughter. You're an elite, and you tell them what to do. Aleister Crowley, we talked about Book 77 in the Jeffrey Dahmer show, says the slaves shall serve. That's the elitist mentality. So... When I criticize Elon Musk and Kanye West and Donald Trump, it's because I believe they would embody this attitude that the slave shall serve. This is all for show, and they're just screwing with us. We see the tools of Freemasonry. Uh, the band's playing their mosh pitting, and you see the cube, Saturn, right? Cube rep Saturn represented by the cube. We see, what you see, the, the cube in Freemasonry when you're standing on your square. Remember they said Kanye wasn't on his square. That's what Charlemagne the God told him back in 2016. You're not on your square. It's a Freemasonry warning for him. We see uh, the hammer inside of a pentagram. And then we see this model, this female. She's at a tomb, and the tomb has an X on it. We talked about this again in the Dahmer episode from Exorcist 3. The crossed arms or the X is the symbol for Osiris rising. The ushering in of the new Luciferian religion. Then we get it. Then we get the model biting the entered apprentice. This is, of course, cannibalism. The, the art in that description says, oh, it's about zombies or whatever. And it's like, it's a little bit more about cannibalism if you ask me. Then you get a bunch of nonsense, and then you see the entered apprentice guy getting into the bathtub. He's got a bell, and the bell has an inverted pentagram on it. But the top, the inverted top of the star pointing downward is ex extended extra long. And you see this on the Salt Lake City LDS temple. They'll have inverted pentagrams with the long top. Then he clubs this female in the head with the mallet, which is kind of like the higher Mabiff thing, maybe, I don't know. She dies on that tomb thing. And the final shot of the 30-minute teaser, you see the, the model, I think it's Isabel, she has no legs, but she's all beat up. And she's got the hoodwink on from Freemasonry, the hoodwink Freemasonry thing, and she's corralling sheep. So is it, a Ken. I mean, what are the odds this is just a quinky dink that this is on the set? All right. 
Moving on, the other book, Michael Borman. The book is actually called As Sweet As It Gets. Lots of people online, lots of truthers are saying, oh, it's, it's a book called Fire From The Sun, which isn't really accurate. And we're going to talk about Fire From The Sun. But As Sweet As It Gets is apparently a book about contentment, but at some point in the book it takes a dark turn. Here's what it says online. It says, For lurking in the shadows of the sunny construction, as sweet as it gets resides something darker. A sensibility that recognizes that if anything is as sweet as it can get, it can quite easily and will most likely soon turn bitter. So I don't know what the contents are of that book, but I do know what the contents of Fire from the Sun is because this artist, Michael Borman, wow, you want to go dark, we're going dark. I found a copy on Amazon. I actually ordered it because I was like, well, I got to see what, what they're talking about. But then I canceled it because I, after I learned more about it, I was like, ugh, I don't want to be in possession of this. So I canceled it. It just has two, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, A, I'm not trying to have that in my house. And, and look, I've got, I've got Charles Manson's hair in my house. Fun story. We'll talk about it. I'm supposed to do Eddie Bravo's show again. Shout out Eddie Bravo. We're supposed to talk about Manson. That's probably happening in mid-2023. I don't know. We'll see. Don't hold him to that. Uh, well, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you guys about why I have Charles Manson's hair. But anyway, if you go to the gallery that hosted this uh, Michael Borman, David Werner's site advertises the exhibition of it in 2018, and it says, "Fire from the Sun" includes small and large scale works that feature toddlers engaged in playful but mysterious acts with sinister overtones and insinuation of violence. The children are presented alone or in groups against a studio-like backdrop that negates time and space while underlining the theatrical atmosphere and art- artifice that exists through Borman's recent work. Reminiscent of cherubs in Renaissance paintings, the toddlers appear as allegories of the human condition. Their archetypal innocence contrasted with their suggested deviousness. Other paintings in the exhibition depict obscure machines whose enigmatic presence appears foreboding in the context of toddlers and suggests an element of scientific experimentation. Now, let's talk about the images of Fire from the Sun. And I gotta tell you, if you look for these images online, Godspeed, my friends, you'll find there's some very disturbing images. There's, so I've heard there's images of castrated toddlers, but you will for sure find images of toddlers painted nude. One I saw it looks like he's on fire. I saw one where it looks like they're picking up body parts. It appears that the toddlers are holding severed heads. One shows them cooking the body parts, I believe, is a fire there, and possibly eating them. And, of course, one of them shows what I believe to be the top half of a bloody palm print. That's right, we're talking about Wilson. Yes, if you recall, we had this really bizarre theory going around called Frazzle Drip. And it was the idea that this bloody palm print would show up on various celebrity clothing and artwork. And some of the ideas are based upon this supposed video of Hillary Clinton in this basement with this kid all chained up and abused. And the theory is that they cut off these children's faces like Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw and they wear them to absorb the energy from the blood. Now, this is like really far out there stuff, right? Obviously, I have no idea if it's true. But it connects into a lot of different theories, like the Wayfair human furniture theory, all the adrenochrome theories, which the adrenochrome idea is a li- is on the spectrum, on the scale, is more plausible than a lot of these other ones. Disturbingly so, right? And of course, the pizza emails. And we've talked about this many times in the past. 
Uh, we've talked about the bloody handprint showing up as part of the QAnon movement, or the early QAnon movement. They talked about this a lot. Justin Bieber was wearing a shirt with it. Ellen DeGeneres had, I believe, some artwork, which was actually a Basquiat painting. And this is where we could tie into Jeffrey Epstein. And of course, Ellen, let's not forget, Ellen DeGeneres' set had what appeared to be the temple at Orgy Island, if you recall, the blue and white striped temple. Recall the description of Fire from the Sun. It said, and I quote, Other paintings in the exhibition depict obscure machines whose enigmatic presence appears foreboding in the context of the toddlers and suggests an element of scientific experimentation. And you could take this a couple directions. One direction that made, it made me think of this when they're talking about these insidious machines. If you've ever watched the Nine Inch Nails Broken EP video sequence, it's about 30 minutes long, it's very disturbing. It's a very nihilistic perspective. And it has this really dark overview of these machines as a weird way of getting off. There's a, there's like a business guy and he gets in this machine and straps up and it, I don't know, pleasures him and then kills him and turns him into worm food. It's, it's bizarre. But it's a very nihilistic sense of we're just animals is you know satan satanism right man is just an animal is what the church of satan says and it's this quasi scientific belief in what our purpose is here i don't believe it you know i think there's a human soul loves a very powerful emotion but the nihilists and some of the scientists that are into this sort of dark view of the world think that you know we're just we're just machines like any other we're just evolved pieces of bacteria and from this idea you get into uh what what do they call it the uh, the Nazis and Hitler eugenics the eugenics program which America was into eugenics for a minute too right it's not like anyone was above it it was uh, again one of the contributions that science has given us not to say i'm fully anti-science but let's be honest about the places they got it wrong which is a whole lot of places you know what i'm saying let's talk about epstein because that's the direction i want to take it recall he had a ranch in new mexico called the zorro ranch and at zorro ranch they were conducting experimentation type events with uh you know we're talking transhumanism I'm going to read to you from New York Times. Jeffrey Epstein, the wealthy financier who was accused of sex trafficking, had an unusual dream. He hoped to seed the human race with his DNA by impregnating women at his vast New Mexico ranch. Mr. Epstein, over the years, confided to scientists and others about his scheme, according to four people familiar with his thinking, although there is no evidence that it ever came to fruition. No evidence, right? Mr. Epstein's vision reflected his long-standing fascination with what has become known as transhumanism, the science of improving the human population through technologies like genetic engineering and artificial intelligence. Critics have likened transhumanism to a modern-day version of eugenics, the discredited field of improving the human race through controlled breeding. Now let's dismantle this nonsense of transhumanism. Science always so full of promises. They always think they can make the perfect human. And what have they done? They've made humans live less, right? In a way. The, they, they feed us GMOs, which are poison and toxins. These companies spew pollution in the air, ruins the air. And look, I, I'm not advocating for let's all live in cabins in the woods and grow our own food. Because that's kind of a nightmare, too. I don't want to do that. But let's just be honest about it, is all I'm saying. Science made some parts of our life easier. 
and cheers to that. However, it's not going to be the silver bullet to making mankind immortal or perfect how they think they're going to do it. They're, they want to create a digital matrix, this metaverse nonsense. They think they can promise you that they can digitize your soul and your consciousness and put it into the matrix, and guess what? Now you live forever. We're going to talk about that in the conclusion. Let's move on. There's this new model, this new person on the scene, the new it girl, Lada Vagina. Lada, <laughs> Lada Volkova. Um... And as far as I know, this whole thing started when MMA fighter Jake Shields started a big to-do on his Twitter. Uh, shout out to Fat Jay Cutler sent me this link about Lada Volkova. Allegedly, she was the cheap designer for Balenciaga. And they do refer to her as the coolest stylist in the industry by Vogue. And unfortunately, her Instagram is now set to private, much like the other figures in this whole scandal. She was getting major heat. She told Newsweek, quote, she condemns the abuse of children in any form. If you look at her artwork, it's very disturbing. A lot of the images are circulating online. Uh, it, <laughs> I don't know. Pretty disturbing stuff. So disturbing, I don't know that I want to share it on my feed. That's how bad it is. And... The claim is that she hasn't worked with Balenciaga since 2017 and had nothing to do with those recent campaigns. Well, sh how did she get hooked into Balenciaga? She got hooked into it through this Demna Vasalia character. All right. She's also worked with Kanye West, by the way. In fact, in 2016, Yeezy, uh, Kanye was talking about his Yeezy collaboration of Balenciaga with Adidas. And he said, he tweeted, I'm going to steal Demna from Balenciaga. So Demna, a big, you know, big to do. But Demna is plugged in with this lot of Alcova. And if you look at the images, I'm going to warn you right now. If you do a Google image search on this lot of Alcova, hell, I might share it on my Instagram. I'll make it easy for you. Instagram.com backslash Isaac Wise. I'm against my better judgment. I'm going to do that for you. Let me, let me just make a note. Jeez Louise. Things I do for you guys. All right. Consider it done. There's gonna, you're going to see lots of kids in really odd poses. Some of them look terrified. Lots of, lots of bondage bears. She says she condemns the abuse of children in any form. Well, I mean, your own artwork... Seems to suggest otherwise. And you'll see in the one, there's this bondage bear with the shibari ropes. Ironically, me and my wife, Josie, on our Breaking Social Norms podcast, did an episode about the House of Hammer series, about Army Hammer, the, the cannibal guy who's talking about eating women and abusing chicks, allegedly. And Army Hammer was really into this shibari stuff. Right. And again, again, just to reemphasize, two consenting adults, knock yourself out. Army Hammer, you want to tie up chicks? Chicks want to be tied up? Go for it. I don't care. Don't bother me none. Just keep the kids out of it. Why you got why you gotta do it right next to the kids? Very weird. Very weird stuff. I know oh, by the way, Army Hammer's dad just died last week. Interesting timing. The kids are in gory scenes. Some of them are disemboweled in Volkova's artwork. Some of them are being terrorized. Again, she said she condemns the abuse of children in any form. Tell that to your own photos and artwork, I guess. There's one of a, a woman sacrificing herself to the devil in a pentagram. There's one of a child holding a skull. There's one of a girl restrained with cell phone tape and, and her eyes and her mouth covered. One image, she hashtags Moloch. Come on now. We've been talking about Moloch and Ball Balenciaga, B-A-A-L, right? What do you think this is? And there's one in, image in particular, you're probably going to see this one more than any other, because even 
some uh, truthers ran this as their sort of headline image. It's it's allegedly Volkova dressed in red holding two babies. Apparently that's fake news and that's not her. The claim I've read is that this is a 2016 photo of some other runway model showcasing Chinese designer Shi Guang Hu during Mercedes-Benz China Fashion Week. So, fake news, apparently. Now, last figure we're going to talk about, we're going to wrap this up. And I got to give a shout out to Jessica Reed Krause. She has a sub stack where she talks about different pop culture scandals. Sometimes she gets into conspiracy territory. I think she did a, a collab with uh, Whitney Webb. Uh, I'll keep my opinions out of that. <laughs> I, you know, Whitney Webb seems like she does good work, but she's plugged in with this, uh, what's this dude's name? Last American Vanguard, who was talking trash on me. Last American, what's his name, Ryan or something? I don't know. Last American Vanguard. And this guy got some award from some fascist guy that he boasts about how he got this shim award or something. And if you look into that award, it comes from some weird fascist propaganda nonsense. I don't know. I don't know how. Anyway, that was something we talked about on Truth or Drama only on Rockfin. So check that out for more, which I don't do that thing anymore, that Truth or Drama, because I don't like the negativity it brings me. But I thought we were all in this together and people were attacking me. Well, where do you think that comes from? I think there's fascist alt-right authorities that are steering the conspiracy truth or movement. And because I don't co-opt their nonsense. They try to bring me down. That's my theory. We're all conspiracy theorists here, right? Rachel, Ch anyway, Jessica Reed Krause. She had a, a subscriber-only article on her Substack, which, I, again, I recommend. Lots of good information there. About a person named Rachel Chandler, okay? Rachel Chandler, her parents owned the LA Times. Pretty curious, right? Well, back in 2016, she was the recruiter for all the models at a Balenciaga runway show. And allegedly, apparently, she's also been to Epstein Island. There was images on this sub stack from Jessica Reed Krause that shows an image of Rachel Chandler on Epstein Island on her Instagram from 2013. I went to verify this. I went to Chandler's Instagram, which I think was hers. Pretty sure it was, but it's private. What do you know? And she links to Midland Agency, which is her company. And what do you know? That one's set to private also. I mean, this whole fashion industry, they're panicking. So she apparently started Midland Agency in 2016. And it was immediately successful. And Krauss theorizes that Maybe it's because she was plugged into Epstein. And if you recall, Jean-Luc Brunel, the French model scout, founded this model management company, MC2. And who funded that? It was a partnership he had with Epstein. And the whole deal was they would allegedly, supposedly, you know, get these models and then get them into this network of human trafficking, blackmail, all the things, right? Brunel, fun fact, Brunel founded the models. I didn't know Sharon Stone was a model. I just watched Basic Instinct for the first time. He founded the models Sharon Stone and Mia Yehovovich. Shout out to them, right? Um, anyway, <laughs> Brunel, shout out. He, Brunel was alleged to be sexually assaulting people, grooming, sex trafficking with Epstein. And he was arrested in, in December 2020 charged with the rape of minors and guess what happened he got epstein that's right he dies of an apparent suicide right before trial i'm telling you all these things are connected and there's something shady going on here now rachel chandler she was apparently promoting this thing called purple night at the standard hotel which was you know just some sex party thing and the owner of the standard andre balaz was apparently besties with Ghislaine Maxwell and Marina Abramovich, Mrs. Spirit Cooking herself. 
Oh, boy. If you don't, I should just do a deep dive one day on Marina. We talked about her so many times. She's the spirit gate, or I'm the pizza gate spirit cooking lady. She hosted many of these events. She had a lot of Crowley connections. She had art exhibitions with like blood and all kinds of stuff, right? And we tied it into Cakes, Alistair Crowley's Cakes of Lights, Cakes of Light communion, Gnostic mass communion wafers made of semen and blood and all that stuff. You got to look through my back catalog. You'll find many episodes we talked about her. And uh, Krause, she posted numerous photos on on this sub stack, which again is a s- subscriber only. It's only like five bucks. And sh- she shows these, I mean, we're talking bare minimum threads, degrees of separation between Rachel Chandler and Ghislaine Maxwell, including a picture of Rachel Chandler with Bill Clinton who we know Bill Clinton was hanging out with Epstein. And one major allegation is that Chandler's Midland agency was instrumental in shifting the whole fashion industry to this appearance at the fashion shows to have these very unique, sort of odd-looking models. And a general vibe that it puts out is that they're young, underage, dare I say homeless, they have sunken eyes like they've been abused. And the theory is that this is done on purpose to entice the elites to attract kids into being trafficked to have this be a look. And what kills me is that Kanye West, who's plugged into every one of these characters, if you recall, the last few years has been pushing this sort of homeless look. If you've ever seen Zoolander, they called it derelict. I remember a few years ago when, when Ye first started wearing this stuff, I remember thinking, oh, this is just like the <laughs> Zoolander movie. It's like a joke. But there's a reason for it now, a dark, insidious reason. Very upsetting. And Krauss says that Chandler had a Tumblr that has since been deleted showing all these images with stuff like that. Massive rabbit hole here, okay? And I wanted to get Krause on my show, so if if anyone out there is plugged into Jessica Reed Krause, tell her to hit me up. I want to I wanna get into this with someone who's dug deep into this stuff. But Krause says that Chandler was buds with Prince Andrew, Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, Paris and Nikki Hilton, which ties us into the Rothschilds. And she was the head stylist for Mrs. Gilgamesh Resurrection Chamber herself, Miss Hillary Clinton. Now, in conclusion, I know we went through a lot today, but let's wrap it up. I'm going to try to give you a perspective on what all this means because it sounds like just insanity, right? It sounds like crazy talk, but everybody's connected. Why are they all connected? I have a theory, all right? Let's refer to this. You may have seen it. These images of people Google Translate the term Balenciaga, and depending on how you break up the word, the first one that was going around, uh, shout out Headroom Capital on Twitter, I think, that's where I, f- I got hooked up there, there was this claim that ba len si aga translates from a language called hausa as do what you want. I checked that on Google Translate, fake news, doesn't work. However, if you go from Latin to English, it does stand for do what you want which is infamously the Aleister Crowley term for the new Aeon of Horus, the new age he sought to bring about. The age where man does his own will and not God's. And if you translate from Latin to English as ball, N-C, aga, you get ball is the king. I mean, illuminate confirm, right? These, the, the truth is being revealed, but I thought, you know, that's really bizarre that you can break it up as do what you want and you can break it up as ball is the king because those tie into all these occult conspiracy topics. If, you, if you're not familiar with any of these things, I'm going to grifter alley you for one second. You got to check out my book, The Dark Path. I've got it on Audible. I narrated it there. You can get it on Amazon. 
You can get signed paperbacks at my Gumroad store, gumroad.com backslash Isaac W. That was my magnum opus of years of this research and trying to my, put my best theory forward of what is going on here. And I think this whole Balenciaga situation is connected to all this. But I wanted to be rational about it and say, okay, there's all this weird stuff going on. What, what does Balenciaga actually mean, right? There's got to be an actual reason for it. And it comes from the name of the Spanish designer and creator, Cristobal Balenciaga Ezeguire. And I thought, okay, well, there you go. Now, does that change the fact that the Latin translations refer to very occult things? Not really. But it's apparently not baked into it. It's part of the guy's name. And what's weird, Christian Dior called this Balenciaga guy, and I quote, the master of us all. What are we what are we doing here? Dior says he's the master of us all. Balenciaga translates to Ball is the King. Who are they paying devotion to? The demonic deity Moloch that people sacrifice their children to? Then we see all these different artists connected to Balenciaga showing us homeless abused kids going through horrific cannibalism and BDSM. Why are they turning out these these young people? I can tell you why. I got a theory. I've been talking to uh, talking to a guy. I'm not gonna say who. Um, let me find it here. I've been. I'm gonna reference you guys a book, "Secret Societies and Psychological Warfare" by Michael Hoffman. All right. There's a section in there. I'm, I'm gonna read it to you. Save you some time. It says, and I quote. The rank-and-file Albigensians were sworn to a life of celibacy and asceticism, the better to avoid entanglements with matter and flesh. There was an additional class among them, however, a ruling or priest class known as the Perfecti. These perfect ones were supposed to practice all the austerity of the rank-and-file and then take that austerity to an even more extreme degree of self-denial in what was supposed to have been a life lived as a perpetual Lent. Which sounds a lot like the the monks, right? Like the, the Greek Orthodox monks. But there was a secret side to the perfecti class, which they chose not to reveal to the, quote, imperfect ones. The secret doctrine of the Albigensians was that since the priest class was perfect, they were above the law, immune to sin, and therefore licensed to indulge in all of the orgies, Gluttony and riches solemnly forbidden to the imperfect lower order Albigensians. The Albigensian model of a secret doctrine for the elite absolving them of most or all of the laws and the disciplines they have publicly commanded to their subordinates represents the original corrupt executive dogma of institutionalism par excellence. It reflects the ancient occult contempt for the lower orders of man in spite of their sucker-bait preachments about everyone's godhood. It also represents the Masonic tradition of a secrets-keeping hierarchy who have the cunning to condemn the elitism of enemy hierarchies while practicing an even more vicious version of their own under the mask of a benevolent and brotherly love. So they view us, the commoners, as sheep. Alistair Crowley said this in Liber 77, in Liber Oz, he said, The slaves shall serve. The slaves shall serve. And in this Michael Hoffman Secret Societies and Psychological Warfare book, that's what he's saying is happening. So I believe that they do this horrific stuff because they think they're above the law, and it's sort of a way of flexing on that and showing off and proving it. I mean, I'm not a demented elitist, so I don't understand these things. But anyway, back to uh, last thing on Cristobal Balenciaga. He died in 1972. I found this on Wikipedia. I didn't go hunting for this. And the Women's Wear Daily ran the headline, The King is Dead. So... Balenciaga, whose name translates to Ball is the King, they say the king is dead when he dies. 
Dior called him the master of us all. Did demonic Moloch, Molochian spirits possess this Balenciaga guy and it's in the company now? I don't know. I got to say, I think that this whole thing with Elon Musk buying Twitter could be good or bad. It could have a positive effect in the sense that a lot of people have been talking about this Balenciaga thing, and I don't think this would have spread if the old, whoever owned Twitter before, was it Jack or whatever his name is, if they would still have it, they would have censored it out. Just like they censored out, uh, what was it? what are they, the Hunter Biden thing or whatever. I don't care about that story, but they censored it out, which is messed up, right? And Elon Musk, he's calling out Apple because allegedly, apparently, Apple is threatening to remove the Twitter app from that app store, just like they did to Alex Jones. Now, I can't imagine that actually happening, but you never know. There's this truly a battle for information right now going on. Now, is Elon Musk the savior? No, he's one of the elitists. I think he's going to look out for his own preservation or his own good, let some of the conspiracy people talk. But he's still going to, you know, he's still going to toe the line, I think, on some level. But who knows? But what it feels like, with everything going on in the world, with Balenciaga, with Kanye West, with Elon Musk, it feels like we're living through a massive revelation of the method. Which is actually something that Michael often talks about in this book, by the way. Maybe someday we'll go through it. I think he's still alive. I think he just did a show with, uh, who did he show? Tim Foyle Hat, maybe? I don't remember. Because this is an old book. I think this is probably 20 years old. This is an oldie but a goodie. All right? Very dense. But we're living through an unfolding conspiracy theory. Is it by design? I don't know. It's kind of strange. I think Ye is being used as an instrument in all of this. And to me, the jury's still out on Ye. It's very possible he's for sure connected to all these figures, which is shady, right? But maybe he saw some things and he's trying to reveal the truth now. Maybe. Maybe he's carefully trying to reveal the truth. Weird way of doing it, buddy. But maybe. Or maybe they're using him to reveal the truth in on some level revelation of the method style now i think that elon musk yay taylor swift britney spears beyonce all these figures play a role in the revelation of the method they have to advance this thing more rapidly now than before with the spread of information and the internet and the connectivity there's a real battle going on and if you recall, Ye had that supposed MK Ultra celebrity trainer, Harley Pasternak, who was also Brittany Murphy's trainer. She died in that haunted house that Brittany Spears also lived in. And she said it was crazy haunted. We covered that topic uh, a year or two ago. We did a two-part show on Brittany Murphy, which you got to listen to if you're into this stuff. But recall, we had Jason Alexander on our show, Brittany Spears' first husband, the 55-hour husband from Las Vegas that the handlers broke them up. And he was saying all this stuff a couple years ago, wasn't he? Again, there's people that get up to these levels and they see some things. And, <laughs> you know, I think, they, I think there's something going on there. And we're being informed of some larger effort going on. And... To me, I think it's a Luciferian agenda. But yeah, Jason Alexander told us Brittany was being controlled and handled a, a year or two before it came out on the news where they officially came out and said, yeah, and Brittany started speaking up for herself and saying, yeah, I've been handled, I've been controlled. You know, these triggers, these MK Ultra triggers, they, they activate and deactivate in the people that are subjected to being handled and given drugs and all this stuff. And yay, remember he called out Jay-Z and Beyonce as taking part of something in this whole thing about them being controlled when he had that whole rant about sacrifices. And here we have Nicholas de Jardine shooting this Balenciaga 
or set designing this Balenciaga ad campaign with the BDSM bears and kids who shot the infamous horse album cover for Beyonce's Renaissance album. And don't think, and look, this ties into Elon Musk because Elon Musk's mother, May Musk, is a big time fashion person. She was in Beyonce's Haunted video. Remember that? You probably don't know that. Elon, everyone thinks, oh, Elon Musk is so great. No, he's a shill. He comes from, he's an elitist that comes from a Silver Spoon family. And they're plugged into all this. His role is to get us in the Matrix via the Neuralink brain cap. And I think he's going to do it through Twitter. And there's enough stands out there blowing Elon right now that they're going to go for it. It's just like Kanye West. He's saying, he says like horrific shit sometimes. And the, and the stands are just, they defend everything he says. Oh, he's the greatest. I, I know because every time I criticize what he says, I got to hear it from these, these zombies, Kanye zombies. Look, there's, there's some good in Kanye, right? Like I said, the jury's out. Maybe he's going to be the guy who can prove us some stuff. Weird way of going about it by being really gross about things. But maybe, let's give it a shot. Let's see what he has to say. And oh, by the way, Elon Musk's, if you think I'm being insane, Elon Musk's Neuralink brain cap, they're doing the human trials in six months. It was just on the news. I just saw it. It's going to be the first social media to integrate right into your brain. And I couldn't tell you of a worse place to live than in Twitter. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Lots of trolling going on there. So here's the big question. Is this satanic? Is it in allegiance to the devil? And to be fair, and I'll play devil's advocate, pun very much intended. You could argue, if you wanted to play devil's advocate, Michael Borman's Fire from the Sun, the, one, the paintings of all the little kids holding severed heads and eating each other and all this stuff. You could argue that his intention is to show us the human condition. That's what art is supposed to do. It's supposed to make you think. And I'm going to compare this to something a little more relatable. Pat Benatar has a song called Hell is for Children. Now, is it literally saying children belong in hell? That's what the title says. No, it's sympathizing for children. In the hell that some of them live in, just like all these kids were talking about trying to protect, right? That's what she, she she said. She had seen so much news stuff about child abuse. That's why she made the song. And that's kind of how art works. Sometimes you gotta shake people up. You gotta disturb them to get their attention, to open up their mind. Not everything is flowery and rainbow and all that, right? Like I watch a lot of horror movies. Sometimes the dark stuff makes you think, and like, uh, you know. Sometimes you gotta disturb. That's how the art works. It's to start a new conversation. If you heard the song title Hell is for Children, you'd be like, yo, what the hell, man? But the song is about raising awareness of child abuse. A noble thing. We all agree is bad. We all agree. Except for these elitists that are showing us this stuff. So maybe, maybe Borman is trying to show us something. The art is about the human condition and what kids have to go through. Maybe it's disturbing that's supposed to open a dialogue about how kids are treated. And that that paperwork, the 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 US versus Michael Williams about kid child pee stuff, it's actually the court case actually rejected the distribution of child pee, saying this is not a protected First Amendment right. So, I mean, maybe, maybe this is showing support for it, saying that this was a good case because it's preventing the distribution of this stuff. I mean, I don't think so. I think it's more of a sneaky, covert way of being insidious, given all the information we talked about earlier. But I got to at least throw that idea out there because it's possible, right? You know, when you live in this conspiracy world... Sometimes you lose, sometimes you go black pill too hard. So I got to throw that out there. I mean, I don't believe it. I think there's a lot of stuff connected to the occult and Ball and Moloch on here. It's, and it's just disturbing. It's like, 
if, if you're trying to raise awareness for child abuse, maybe you should call it the raise awareness for child abuse campaign or something. I don't know. And to me, the strangest thing that we saw in all this was the Latin translations of Balenciaga converting over to do what you want and ball as the king and, you know, do what you want, of course, ties us into Aleister Crowley. And his whole thing was to bring about the new age, the Aeon of Horus, which is the one the dark arts occultists seek to bring about. And Baal or Moloch or Saturn, they are the de- deities of sacrifice, particularly of children. And the dark arts that these people embrace, it leans towards dark things. And if you ask me, is it satanic? I would say yes. In the sense of a spiritual battle of light and darkness, good and bad, good and evil, yes. It falls on the wrong side of that. And it's about this new age, the Aeon of Horus, the Apocalypse, the Armageddon. It just means the revelation, the revealing of the truth. The truth is there's people into this Luciferian religion. It seems. It's how Beyonce and uh, Balenciaga got roped into all this. Maybe that's what Ye is trying to say. Maybe he's trying to reveal it to us. Again, I think he's doing it in a really bad way if that's what he's attempting. But Larry Johnson, who also is kind of extreme conspiracy guy, he said Beyonce's a controlled Luciferian. And he was besties with Jay-Z. Ye was also buzzed with Jay-Z. So these guys, I mean, they've been hanging out with a lot of these people we talk about. And if you recall... You know, Ye has done a full 180. Because back when Taylor Swift won the award for best video, Ye got on stage, did the humiliation ritual, stole the mic from her, said Beyonce had the best video of the year. Or no, I think it's best video of all time, I think is what he said, with the put a ring on a video, which, oh, by the way, she stole that dance from someone else. The whole choreography wasn't original, apparently. Well, he did that humiliation ritual. And you remember... And if you read my book, Sacrifice Magic Behind the Mic, you'll know that later that night, he was out at dinner, and he said, my mother died for this. He said his mother got sacrificed. She had just died. Fast forward several years, and he said it again. He's basically saying this blood sacrifice is a real thing, and it's going on in entertainment in Hollywood. We'll see what happens. Now I gotta go. I gotta listen to four hours of Alex Jones and and uh, Kanye West. We covered a lot today. Uh, if you're new to this whole topic, I gotta advise you to check through my back catalog. There's a I've got on well, damn near 500 shows topics you're going to be interested in scroll through find of course subscribe right you gotta you gotta like it subscribe find some other shows learn more about it if you want the high octane truth get the dark path amazon audible signed paperbacks on gumroad links are always in the show notes and until next time stay woke